What up, guys? We're doing Sandy. Oh, Tara. Uh, fun fact, I played with Sandy in 2015. And uh, impressive, impressive human being. Impressive athlete. Let's go ahead and uh, break it down. I got uh, footage here from the All-Star Game. Shout out to my guy, Jeremy Machino, for sending me this video. Um, so first thing, just looking over his initial move, I talk about this in my, my ebook, A Complete Guide to Pitching Mechanics. Find that on the robberyroshow.com slash ebooks. Uh, within the initial move, I'm looking for four components. We won't dive into all of those things, but a big piece of the, the initial move is, is rhythmic movements influence optimal timing. Okay, so what do I mean by rhythmic movements? Well, hands and feet working together. I believe that the hands are going to match the tempo of the feet and the feet are going to match the tempo of the hands. If not, if they're moving at a rate uh, of disconnection, then there's going to be some... Uh, there's going to be some compensations in the delivery. There's going to be um, inconsistencies in the delivery, especially inconsistencies in the release slot. So um, hands starting high, right? So this is obviously out of the windup. Starting high, dropping low, moving high upon leg lift, right? Like these are all rhythmic movements uh, that you're going to see while we just play this as these are both synced up at ball release. Okay, so... Now let's dive into the thick of it. Initial move, we're looking uh, at the tempo, the rhythmic movements, so the hands go low, high upon leg lift. And now this is a huge move. This is a big piece I talk a lot about too. A lot of pitching guys talk about this because it's just important. Upon leg lift, shifting center mass, right? So like obviously the slope, we want to maximize our, our, our production on the slope. We're the only overhead athletes that are allowed to use a slope, so we want to, we want to use it to its full potential. Um, so what does that mean? So it means by getting our center mass, getting our body, getting our, 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 our entire frame moving down the slope to, to accept gravity, all right? Uh, that is a huge piece to the initial move is kind of getting some of this forward momentum, right? So if we draw this line with Sandy, let's go 90 degrees. Um, you're going to see as he, uh, as he lifts his leg, he's shifting, right? And now as he descends, he's moving like he's, he's, a, he's abiding by gravity. He's not trying to defy gravity, um, which would force him to like shoot backwards, right? Now, there's a difference between acknowledging, um, sorry, accepting acceleration down the slope and tilting the trunk to load the drive leg. We'll talk about that in a bit, um, but just staying kind of on the initial move here. All right, so um, you can see this move here as he kind of coils, right, as he coils over that rear hip. Real good stability within the, uh, within the drive leg and the drive foot, right? There's not a whole lot of movement, not a whole lot of compensation that's affecting his overall uh, loading phase and uh, direction um, head still very quiet right like that's kind of the common theme you see with him is like very quiet very still and uh, and just appearing effortless right like that's hard to do so now this is what i was talking about within the the accepting of gravity right now this is a change up i believe you can see with his hands nastiest change up got to be the hardest change up in the league right so this is what I was talking about with like the gravity and, and getting. So like notice where his pelvis is, his center mass. Notice how his trunk is tilted. Now I talk, uh, there's a whole chapter obviously breaking down the, the mechanics in my, my book um, that I'll, I'll, I'll include the link to that, to that ebook uh, in the, uh, the descri description below. I'm having a really hard time with words right now. It's, it's early in the morning. We're on the road. Give me a break. So uh, there's a whole chapter in drive leg mechanics about the loading phase. Now there's components that help influence a proper load of the drive leg, right? So like loading patterns, quad dominant, hip hinge, so on and so forth. But the components is what we can do with our torso, with our trunk to allow that. What we can do with our glove side um, to influence an optimal loading phase of the drive leg. So with Sandy, he's a, he's a trunk tilter, right? We talked about that coil initially here as he kind of coils that lead leg. Um, 
now there's the two components that I see most of in terms of the loading of the drive leg is what we do with the lead leg, um, kind of shooting this way as a counterbalance to load this way. Um, the glove side shooting like out, like think you Darvish in this aspect, right? So the, the lead leg shoots outwards and the glove side shoots outwards to allow him to better sink in his glute. Now with Sandy, what he does is he's going to be a little bit this way, more linear, and he's just going to quickly load with that trunk tilt, right? So you see that loading phase, but this is different than like really trying to shoot backwards and, and defy gravity down the slope, right? There's a, there's a big difference in this move, um, which is going to be present with a lot of younger guys with a lot of instability issues. Hand separation, flawless. Um, I like I like what he does in terms of the glove side matching the kind of angle and the posture of the lead or whoa the glove side matching the angle and posture of the of the the throwing arm, right? So if you see this, why doesn't anyone get on him for short arming it? Why is it just me? I guess because his hand drops. Uh, you can already see from this back angle, right? Like he is going to be creating a lot of stretch within his chest, all right? So now what we're doing is we're getting into our hip rotation mechanics here. Short, simple, compact with the, the throwing hand, the throwing arm. Notice how the hand and the arm action itself doesn't travel backwards, right? It stays at the acceleration of the body going down the slope, meaning like if the hand's trying to like unauthentically create leverage, it's gonna shoot back. Like remember the whole idea in Little League point to the second baseman, like who, who thought of that? So what I see with if that was if that were to occur, then you're going to miss out on like the acceleration of the body. So the body's going to the brain's smart. It's, it's got a it's all one piece, all one motion. So if the arm is kind of in 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 this aura of the body, I know this is getting really nerdy, then there's no there's no need for the, the hand um, or the body itself to drastically like slow down the tempo of, of the entire uh, the entire motion. Right. So hand separation, body's moving, hands moving with it. And now this is where we're going to get into the goodness. You're going to see the elbow retract as the hip internally rotates. You can see that as the knee comes down, that hand's going to shoot back. Or Sorry, the elbow's going to initiate that retraction. That's a good tip for a lot of young guys too. Stop trying to retract with the hand and, and think about retracting with the elbow. Now, the, the, the important piece to notice here too, this is getting a little technical, is like as he retracts, it's not a forced movement which you see a lot of times with guys like trying to do like you know velo reads and all this stuff um to force velocity they'll force this retraction and then what'll happen is like it'll take their trunk and kind of like extra counter rotation will then restrict cervical rotation so the guy can't even see right um and then what happens is you create a lot of like counter rotation and maybe a lot of rotational energy but then it becomes very like spinny and pulley, uh, pulls off. So with his move is like this retraction occurs very authentic, very organic. And this movement, I call this the velocity enhancing, whoa, enhancing, velocity enhancing move as the timing of the hand flipping up above the shoulder is the timing in which the lead foot is anchoring into the ground. Right. So what that does now for us is it it resists the rotation of the upper half while the lower half is rotating and we create all this rotational energy within this throw. And by the time that we anchor down is the time that we release this energy in the direction of the target. Right. So I talk about this in the book as well, like with the hand. Whoa, sorry. The hand placement right if you just look at the hand traveling through space if that's up right so say it's like up in this area like above this shoulder line right if that's if that hands above there say in this frame right here then what's going to happen is the trunk is going to want to start to go because it's really hard to stabilize your trunk and keep this neutral torso posture uh, if your hand is up so with it being down and flipping up at the correct moment in time, it's just timing, right? So boom, anchoring down, landing with the heel first. Another chapter in the book, how the front foot should land to effectively and efficiently absorb force in the lead leg. So absorbing this energy here, boom. And now you can see, boom, once we stop that lead knee, that's when everything's going to get pulled through. 
which then influences arm speed, right? Arm speed is not generated by the arm alone. That's why it's, that's my whole thing on like short arm, arm action. They, it really doesn't matter. It's just a timing. The, the, the hand, the, the, the hand distance that it travels right throughout the entire delivery. It doesn't matter. It just, it only matters when it comes down to this front foot anchoring into the ground, get your hand above there and then you're good. You can, your hand can travel wherever it pleases. All right. As long as this timing is occurring. And now looking at the finish, like he's a tall dude. Like he was like four inches taller than me, three inches maybe. I'm six, four. So he was probably six, 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 seven is. Why am I saying was? All right. Boom. Pulling through. So the trunk, another chapter in the ebook, glove side mechanics. Trunk, go get the glove side, right? Everyone thinks glove side needs to pull into the trunk. That's going to cause this to spin early. Go get the glove side. That's going to aid in more trunk rotational velocity and shout out to Courtney, chest poof. All right, so you have ball release here. It's a good picture. And Oh, that wasn't a change up. That was a cheddar cheese, man. Doesn't that grip kind of look like a change up? Or am I just blind? Why isn't this guy watching the game? Why is that guy wearing a Red Sox hat? Is that Matt Damon? Whoa. All right, check out my ebook, uh, A Complete Guide to Pigeon Mechanics. That's Sandy Alcantara, and I'm Robbie Rowe. And I am done. Much love, guys. God bless. See you.